Okay, I'm here to show you the basic use of the squirrel. So first off, there's a squirrel. Next thing you'll need to go with the squirrel is a carabiner to attach it to your harness. You want to avoid carabiners with an I-beam construction where the cross section of where the squirrel is going to ride is not round. The ones with a little channel runs around the carabiner. Makes them nice and light, but not ideal for a rappel device. You want to avoid those. What you want to stick with are carabiners with a round cross section. Basically where the squirrel will sit on the carabiner is just a round bar. That's what you always want to use. If you look inside the squirrel, you'll see there's a, a black O-ring. That will make sliding the carabiner onto the squirrel a little difficult. You'll just kind of have to work it in there. The reason for that O-ring is to keep the squirrel from migrating around on the carabiner. It'll kind of stay in one place. That'll keep it from riding down onto the spine or various places. When you're rigging the squirrel, you do not want it on the spine or anywhere on the curve. You always want it at the very top of the carabiner. So the carabiner is tensioned straight across the spine. So it'll hook onto your harness this way. This will be for right-handed use. Flick it in, you're good to go. The tail should be facing your brake hand. If you want this for left-handed use, take the squirrel, turn it over, put it on the carabiner. You're ready for left-handed use. The tail should be at your brake hand. So I'll be doing right-handed use for this. There we go. We're all set and ready to go. So your basic use, single rope use first. Take a bite of rope. Place that bite of rope through the throat of the squirrel with the brake strand going toward the tail. Click the bite into the rappel device, and then you'll always want to lock your carabiner. That's locked up. Detension it so you've got tension between yourself and the anchor. So you've got a way to lean back on the thing. That is the lowest friction mode you're going to have. It's a simple mode, lowest friction level, or lowest friction setting. So if you need more, this can be done while you're rappelling, before you're rappelling, at any time, weighted or not weighted. You just take this brake strand of rope and pull it up into the first tail hole. That'll give you an addition, uh, additional friction. If you need more, wind it down into the second tail hole, which will give you even more friction. If you need more friction than that, pull it up into the third tail hole. So you have four levels of friction. The initial, one, two, and three tail holes. So that's friction level zero, one, two, and three. If you find that you are either a heavy person or carrying a heavy load or using smaller ropes and need more friction than simple mode and all the tail holes will offer, you can bump up to jumbo mode. That is the second of the uh, friction modes, second higher. You'll take the by a strand of rope on the right side of the carabiner by the tail, pull it out, slide it over the tail, and cinch it down again. With it cinched down, you're going to want it running all the way around the tail into this first tail hole. You don't want this loop to grab the ear or any other part of the tail. It needs to be nice and tight around that area. That'll give you more friction than the simple mode did. Then when you want to add friction, it's exactly the same. Into the first tail hole, into the second tail hole, into the third tail hole. That's more friction than simple mode. Again, the tail hole can be used at any time while it's weighted or not. If you find that that is not enough friction and you have small ropes or you're a big person or you're carrying a heavy load, you have one other mode that can be set prior to weighting the device. Set it up in jumbo mode, just as explained here. This time, additionally, take the rope strand on the side of the carabiner opposite the tail, give just a little bit of slack, and push it right behind that behemoth tab. The behemoth tab's a little fin on the side of the carabiner opposite the tail. So it should look like that for jump, uh, behemoth mode. That'll give you more friction than either of the other two modes. Again, you want to add friction. First tail hole, second tail hole, third tail hole. Easy to just adjust the friction up or down during repel, whatever you need at the time. So that covers your basic use for single rope. Now we'll go to double rope use. We're going with two ropes. We happen to be repelling double strand. 
Same thing, you just treat both ropes as though it was one. Take a bite. Throw that bite through the throat. Again, making sure that the brake side of the rope is toward the tail. Flip it into the carabiner. Again, lock your carabiner and pull out your slack so that you're, you've got tension between yourself and the anchor. When you need more friction than that while you're on rappel, same as the single rope modes. First tail hole, second tail hole, third tail hole. This is for simple mode with double rope. You do not want to use double strand with jumbo mode or behemoth mode. The reason for that is using jumbo mode or behemoth mode with two ropes and you need to add friction. You now take yourself where you need four ropes to fit in this tail hole and that's not going to happen. So you're only supposed to use double ropes with simple mode. Boom. So there's your double rope use. For removing yourself uh, from the rappel, give yourself a little slack, remove the ropes from the carabiner, and pull out. And that's your basic use on using the squirrel. Have fun!